Hi there, this video is sponsored by SASE, a growing community of peers that are at the intersection of automation and software engineering. More on that later. Before I got into industrial automation, my main operating system was GNU Linux. This has always been my choice for operating system, mainly because of its openness and flexibility. Because of this, it's a platform that's very suitable for software development. Industrial automation, however, does not give that option. Industrial automation, being the closed world it is, mostly targets Windows with respect to their development environments. So Windows is where I've been stuck lately. As the times went on, I started feeling that I started to get a little rusty with Linux, so I decided I needed a change and do something about this. In the last month or so, I've exclusively been running Linux as my main operating system for my daily work. But how does that work? How can I combine Linux with PLC programming? This is done using virtualization technology. In Linux, this is done using KVM, the kernel-based virtual machine. KVM is a high-performance hypervisor with minimal overhead, which allows you to run virtual machines in Linux. In this video, I will guide you through how you install and enable KVM in Linux. In this video, using my favorite flavor, which is Debian. How you create a virtual machine and install Windows 11 on it. Then we finalize by installing the Twinket XE on it and write and run a simple PLC program to get the full PLC developer experience. Before we start, make sure you have virtualization technology enabled in your BIOS of your computer. I've provided some resources in the video description of how to check this. Let's get started. Okay, I have a completely fresh installation of Debian 12 on this machine. The first thing we're going to do is to update our package sources, our package lists. Next, we're going to install KVM itself and some additional utilities that we're going to use. Uh, so I'm going to put all of these commands and everything in the comments below in the video. So you can just copy and paste those uh, for your application if you're running Debian 12, that is. So yeah, it takes quite a lot of space, 215 additional megabytes of space necessary for this. When installation is done, write this list to check whether there are any virtual machines installed, which there shouldn't be. So you should just get an empty list. And then you know that the software is successfully installed. Next, we're gonna install a tool to help us manage the virtual machines through a graphical user interface, which is called Virt Manager. So simply install that. When you've installed it, you have this nice tool called the Virt Manager. When you start it, you'll get a graphical user interface to manage your virtual machines. So you need to have root access for this, which is actually true for everything we've done so far. That's why I had to use the sudo keyword for everything prior to installing all the software. So you have to enter your password here before you can connect to KVM. And now we are connected to KVM. So I should mention that you don't need to install this virtual machine manager. It's You could do everything through the command line interface, but I know a lot of PLC programmers are not very keen on using a command line interface. So there I think a graphical user interface like this is very convenient. And it also gets a little bit of the feeling you might have from prior experiences uh, with using something like VirtualBox in Windows, for example, or Hyper-V. Before we create a new virtual machine, we're gonna go to the Microsoft's website and download a Windows 11 ISO. Simply Google download Windows 11, go to the Microsoft website, go down to download Windows 11 disk image, multi-edition, download, uh, select the language. So here I'm gonna select English, confirm, and then select 64-bit download. Okay, Windows 11 is downloaded. So let's click here, create a new virtual machine. We wanna install the operating system from an ISO image, which is what, what we just downloaded. Forward, we browse for it. Browse local, downloads. Here we have the ISO file, open and then forward. The emulator may not have search preferences, but do you want to correct this now? Uh, yes. Memory, I would say a minimum of 16, 16 gigabytes. 
uh, four CPU cores adjusts to whatever requirements you might have. 128 gigabytes is enough. And yeah, let's just call it Windows 11. Uh, for network, I'm just gonna run a virtual network interface uh, through NAT. It is possible to bridge it if you need to, for example, be able to connect it to a PLC. Uh, for now, I'm just happy to have network access. If you need to be able to connect it to a PLC, you're obviously gonna need to run a bridge device, which is gonna give you um, uh, network access outside of your host. And then finish. We need to start the network now, yes. And then we wait. Now we're gonna install the operating system. I was supposed to press any key, which I didn't. So I will reset, press any key. I will press any key. And now we are in the installer for Windows 11. I'm gonna go with time and currency format of Sweden. You choose whatever is appropriate for you. I have a Swedish keyboard layout here. I wanna install Windows 11 Pro. And now Windows 11 is installing. Before we continue, a few words from our sponsor. Come join us for the inaugural SASE gathering. The first event designed by automation software engineers for automation software engineers. This is your opportunity to connect with peers, participate in expert panels, engage in participant-led talks, and dive into hands-on building at Loop HQ. Be part of shaping the future of SASE. Register now to secure your spot. Okay, Windows 11 is installed in the virtual machine. Now I'm going to download the package manager so that I can install Twinket 4026 inside this virtual machine. Next, we're gonna install the package manager. After installation of the package manager, we're gonna start it. You can use the, either the command line interface for it or the GUI for it, the human machine interface package manager, which I'm gonna be doing here. Enter your username and password. I only gonna install the 64-bit version of the TCXE shell. Okay, and here we're gonna install both the engineering and runtime. So I'm gonna select the standard package or workload, workspace, workload, whatever it's called. But I also wanna make sure I have the use mode runtime installed because we're gonna run our software not in a kernel mode, in the kernel space, but we're gonna run it in the user mode, so in, in user space, so as a process in Windows. You can run it in the traditional kernel mode if you want to, like we've done before in Twinket in a virtual machine. Uh, but the nice thing with Twinket 4026 is that we have the possibility to run it in uh, user mode, in user space now, which makes life um, much more easier when you want to develop and run software locally on your machine because you don't have the dependencies and you don't have to do the core isolation, which we generally have to do when we work with virtual machines and Twinket. So we'll install that. Package is installed. Now we're going to do a reboot of our application. Uh, sorry, of the operating system. <laughs> okay, rebooted. Now we can start the XE shell. Let's create a new Twinket project. Let's create a PLC project and create our usual counter application that doesn't do anything else than increment a counter. And we're now gonna run this in our user space uh, runtime that has been included in Twinket 4026 or is given as an option. Normally you don't have that here. You have to actually start it separately from Twinket. So if you go here, you can right click and then you have the user space runtime here and you can select start. Once that is started, you can select it as an option. So this now is gonna run as a normal process in Windows. So no special configuration necessary for this. Select yes. Activate configuration, we can do auto start, okay. Generate licenses just as usual. And we can log in and the application is running. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to show you. I mean, it's extremely easy. As you can see, it's extremely easy to run virtualization in Linux and integrate your complete PLC development environment that you're used to running in Windows in a virtual machine in Linux with very, very low performance penalty. So this is running a level one hypervisor. So it's very, very close to the hardware and the performance penalty is very low. It's really 
it really feels like running this machine, this Windows 11 machine directly on the hardware of this, this computer that I'm running. Are you using Linux in your daily work? Have you considered running PLC, your PLC development environment in a virtual machine in Linux? If you have any thoughts, any suggestions, any additional things you sh think I should talk about in a future video, please leave a comment below. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, happy coding.